Hello guys, it's me again, Insane Gorilla, and welcome back to my channel. This is What If Issei Was a Pure Bloody Devil Part 1 I hope you like, comment, and subscribe. And please let me know what you think down, or, down below in the comments. So, let's get on with the video, shall we? In a random, well, in a random area in Japan, is somebody would be looking at some images. Is it look and scan? Is he would be writing something down or looking at some images. The images seem to be that of an of two buildings, a old warehouse and a shopping mall, which is also abandoned and scheduled for destruction sometime soon. As he would pick the notes up. Sorry about that. And along with the images. As he would put the images on the board. As he would have pins with red line, with red string, going to different pins with red string. Some with green strings, others with blue. As if there's a mix and match. There's a guy, well, this person would turn around, revealing foggy eyes, that of someone who's blind, but is easily walking around all of the stuff. As the cloak he'd wear would be taken off. Revealing a combat suit with no sleeves, revealing very bulked muscles. That of a bodybuilder. A mask covering his hair, nostrils, mouth, most of his neck. As he would have a, well, blue vest that looks a bit like a ninja as he would look at one last image as he would just sigh as cold was freezing frigid breath would leave his lips as it even show, as it walk away, as it walk in to an old warehouse with multiple generators that weren't plugged in to anything, just getting ready to be moved, but had been abandoned for years. As he would walk through this abandoned warehouse, this was only a couple of sec couple of minutes away from his base of operations. As he'd continue moving is he would check everything from the generators to the catwalks as if he is searching for something or someone because where he looks looks like it can hold a regular sized person 
as he'd walk away from his last port of call, which was an office. They did see it was in use at some point, as an office had been turned into that of a small home for somebody. As it see drips of something on the floor that seemed to have melted the, well, floorboards to a certain extent. I'm close. As he would walk a little bit further on, checking for any more of these spots of liquid or acid spots. As you move to the to an exit, seeing that the door had been opened from the inside. My quarry must have left already. There's only one place I should go and check now. As you walk out of the door, careful not to close it, because he needed this person to go back, thinking that it's safe. As you look down the street, 45 minutes of a walk and I'll reach my next target. i better hurry. There's no telling when the sun will shine again and my target will flee. As you walk calmly towards the shopping mall, when he arrives he would look at the shopping mall as he would look at the fence, seeing that someone had gone in. Fascinating. Who would go in there at this time at night? As he'd stand back up again after, well, sort of leaning over to check the padlock. As he would walk through the chain-linked fence that was opened. As he would walk in. His feet not making a single noise. As he would look down. Kneel. Footprints. Hmm. That of two students from Kua Academy. But what are they doing here? They're just the same age as me. Hmm. Fascinating. Yes, you follow one footstep. Well, one set of footsteps. Being stealthy and quiet. It's a go into a store. As you'd see something shining, a torch, as you'd duck, as you'd hear someone humming, and you'd hear a voice. Damn it, where am I? Ah, I knew coming here late at night was a bad idea. Oh, but I always wanted to check out one of these abandoned buildings. Hmm. There's nothing good here. If the torch would shine towards where this man is. <sighs> I better keep out of the light. I do not need her to see me. Yes, the guy would leave quickly and stealthily, not making a single noise again. As he'd get behind a pillar, as the light would get closer and closer, Eventually, it would walk, this girl would walk out, definitely wearing the Kuo Academy school uniform. As the guy would watch her with 
bated breath, hoping it should leave. <sighs> Damn it, Caddis, where are you? As the guy's eyes would widen, there are two girls in here. Hmm. I must protect them both at this time. He would follow this one girl. He's following her and following, making sure that he keeps her in sight. Until he'd hear something ting. What? Huh? Who's there? He's, he'd be behind a pillar. Damn it. Yes, he'd pretty much jump. His ice would form around his hands as he'd stick to the pillar high above. Ah, it's just a piece of metal. Ah, the wind must have knocked it over. Yes, she wouldn't hear it, hear it, but she thought she it would be the wind. That was close. That was really close. As you jump, well, get back down from the pillar, as you'd follow the woman again. Is he'd creep up behind another pillar, a lot thinner, but he'd still manage to slink into be perfectly in line with it. Caddis! Caddis, where are you? Yes, he would continue following. Yes, the girl would suddenly start twitching and start moving her back as if she's going to look around as he would quickly hide once more, seeing the light. I swear, I thought I could hear something following me. Somebody following me. You should turn around again. Well, this, this light would turn around again. You see, pop his head just around the corner. Even now, if she kept her head turned towards where, well, she was pointing, she would have seen two misty eyes appear. He's, he would follow her once more as they head deeper and deeper into this abandoned mall. She would go up a deactivated escalator. He would follow, just not going up the same thing. He would use the wall. He would climb up the wall and get up to the top. Yes, he would follow. If they'd both hear a girl scream, as this, as this girl in front would run. The guy behind her would run as well. Barely keeping up, well, keeping up with her quite well. And also keeping behind her to make sure he doesn't get spotted. As you see this girl turn the corner, as he would hold behind the corner and turn his head slowly, well, move his head around the corner to see. I need to see the girl gone. What the? Where are they? Where did they go? Or where did she go? Is it walk ever so slowly? Is it be ready for a fight? Is you would hear something go click? Is it look down? and see basically a pair of shoes. As he'd look up to see a hole in the roof, or a hole going up to the next floor. Interesting. As he'd jump up in through the hole, and pretty much think of a superhero landing, but ninja style. So he does a ninja landing. As you'd scan his surroundings, as you'd see webs, 
What in the devil's name is this? Yes, he would move. Through the webs. Well, past the webs, really. He doesn't know what made them. Is Well, he'd seen two other pairs of shoes. Well, another pair of shoes. Hmm. Size nine and a half. Hmm. The girl, the other girl's, was a size seven. Hmm. I wonder what's actually here. This is walk again. This time, being cautious due to the webs. This would even look up and around to make sure that nothing was around him at that time. As he'd walk into a room, as he'd see fabric. As he'd hide, well, pretty much hide around the, the door, peer in slowly to make sure that he isn't spotted. Only you see the fabric of clothes. That specifically are torn and decompopulated. As his eye would rise, well, his right, left eyebrow would rise a little bit. Why would someone remove clothes? This is the cool academy uniform for girls. Hmm. And this is the same. Although this one appears to be more damaged than the other one. Hmm. How interesting. How interesting indeed. We should move further afield. As you find what appears to be bones, as you walk over and grab what seems to be a femur, femur, a femur bone, well, bone, really, mainly the skull, human remains, whatever's here. Eats human flesh. Is he would move forward, well, go back out of the room. Is he'd look over as he'd see something move. Is he ask himself, what was that? I've never seen something like that before. But he would move again. Finding a bridge, he would go over. Finding the bridge is made out of nothing but webs. As he takes his time cautiously, eventually he would get over to the other side. As he would look dead ahead of himself, well, to the left of himself, seeing that they were cocoons. As he would see one basically moving, as his hand would turn in, well, his three fingers on his right hand would turn into that of a blade made out of ice, as he'd slice across it, destroying the webs, as somebody would fall out, as he'd catch them, only to see that they are nothing but a withered husk of, of, their, youth, or of their former selves, and cold as anything, so that they have been dead for a while. So he'd put the body down, 
and give it a frozen grave. Is it pretty much do the same to the others? Finding pretty much the same thing. They're all dead. Some were war were slightly warm. The others were mostly cold. So some of them had been killed recently. Not too recently, but recently enough. This place needs to die. Or this place needs to be frozen solid. And shattered. As you'd stand and walk away. If he stayed, he would have seen a leg of sorts peer over the side. Is well, it would have been that of a bug leg. And as he would continue moving, he would stumble upon a sight. Sight of freshly eaten corpses. He would walk over and see that one of them isn't the girl, well, both of them aren't the girls. They turned out to be two adult males by the looks of it. He said, stand up straight. After having a closer look, he said, move further ahead. Is well, he would walk further ahead, stealthy as hell, but starts feeling off, as if he's no longer the hunter, he's now the hunted. As his body, as he slowly turned his body around, something was there was there, considering of the small dust cloud that shows that something was following him. Looking up, he wouldn't see anything. Looking over the rails, he wouldn't see anything either. So, he would continue moving on, slowly. is he gets a bad, sinking feeling that what he's about to find will put him to the test for a while. As he continues moving, he'd feel his bones beginning to tense. His heart starts to beat. His eyes start shifting from side to side. He could feel his body sweating. So pump more of his colder nature through his body to cool him off and to also, well, make his heart rate, heart rate calmer. As he would find a door as he would open it to see two girls, one with pink hair and the other with brown, both of them, well, in their bras and panties, both huddled together, shivering. Both of them appeared to have been, well, dragged, forcefully stripped, and dragged here. But by whom, he does not know. As he goes over to them both, they would, both of their eyes would snap open as they'd both look around, but couldn't see anything due to it being so dark. Is They would hear, Are you all right? As they'd both ask, Who's there? 
is to hear the voice again in front of them. It's all right. I am a friend. I am here to help you. I am here to get you out of this hellhole. What are your names? Is the pink hat would just say, we're not telling you our names, whoever you are. I understand. You can call me Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero? You're talking as if you're from a... If, as if... as if you're from a game. Perhaps. I am from a game. But this is no time to argue. What's the last thing you both remember? I... I... I remember coming in here with... with my friend and... Well... We explored. I found something. I was about to walk back and talk and talk to my friend and all of a sudden something attacked me and I screamed. I heard the scream. I was on my way to talk to you or well, talk to my friend and I was still walking, although I should have ran, but I felt as if I was being f followed. That's because you were being followed. What? I was following you. C creep. I was trying to protect you, but also trying to stay out of sight. I failed at protecting you, but f succeeded in staying out of sight for now. Although I feel as if I am being followed myself. Whatever attacked us, it was fast. It scuttled around like a bug on the floor. Acknowledged. Which one of you is Caddis? Mr. Pinkhead would say, how do you know my name? I heard your name being called. As Candice would look to her friend, saying, You called out my name? I didn't know where you were, and plus it was echoey, okay? Quiet. I'll hear your names later. For now, it appears we have company. Stay still and do not move from this spot. You're not adamantly dressed. No, no kidding. Is it here? Nothing for a while. Is then they'd hear a bang and crash and an ah coming from the mysterious friend. Is it in here cackling? Out on the floor is the guy would hit the floor but roll onto his feet. As he'd basically crack his neck and his arms, ready for combat. Is it see your well, see something shine in the moonlight? As he'd look up to see a web of a spider, as this spider would touch the floor with human-like feet, and he would see spider-like legs popping out the back of this person, as he'd hear a girlish chuckle, my, 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 do not, do I not have a treat tonight? Checking those two poor girls was so easy. Their minds were fragile and weak. Yet their bountiful bodies would mm, make me so much more in, well, nicer than I look. I can't wait to suck them dry 
so I can have their perfect figures. But they also brought me a tasty little morsel. Somebody who mm, seems all too poetic. They brought a man. A man that I can have my way with. I can finally have a brood to myself. You're insane. Oh, no. No, 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 little morsel. You see, I am not insane. I am just hungry for flesh. The people you have stolen were all too easy to trick. Some of them were even a little too horny. I saw their moves. I saw their looks. I know that they were all too fascinated with my beauty. The beauty of my body. And I wasn't afraid to uh, allow them to have a little touch of the goodness. I let them feel pleasure before I killed them and ate their bodies, flesh and organs alike. The only thing I couldn't get to were their brains, unfortunately. The human skull. Mm. Such a such a fascinating prize. Even if you can't get the gooey goodness out from their heads. You are a vile creature. Vile? Oh, tasty little morsel. You wound me. I am not a vile creature. I am a sexy one. You are not that. Not even close. Oh, once again, you wound me. No matter. You'll be paralysed and unable to do a thing. And I'll be able to make you give up that which is most important. As long as I get filled, I wouldn't care that at the least I need a strong male to get what I need. And all the others will... We're weak, inexperienced, totally easy to be... Have, to ch have me charm them off their socks. Hell, I only showed the bounty to those who truly deserved it. But those people, so horny, it was untrue. I believe the last guy I had said that he wished that he had an angel like myself. I had to tear him apart for that one after telling him that angels do not exist. And I am certainly no angel. As I tore him apart, I heard him scream. His beautiful screams. Music symphony to my ears. You are a disgusting, vile creature. Before she could monologue even more, she'd hear him stamp his foot to the floor. As her eyes would open and she'd see a ice spear coming at her from the ground. Oh, what the hell? Ice. I've only seen one woman with ice like this. Who are you? I am not important, but you can call me Sub-Zero. Well, Mr. Sub-Zero. As he'd walk into the light. Time to die, witch. Ah, oh, no. No, 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 no. Not gonna die. You, on the other hand. Yes, you'd well, suddenly skulk towards him at 
breakneck speed. And she actually jumps, trying to, well, claw him with her poisonous legs to poison him to get him to stop moving. Only for her to be shocked when ice sprouts out of his back in the way of a slippery surface, but also could cut. And she uses her actual hands and feet to get away from him before she could lose her extra ligaments. <sighs> you got definitely like her. That bitch definitely knew how to use ice. Yes, he wouldn't speak. But he would be confused, even if he does attack her. He is confused by her sudden admission to someone else who could use his power. As he would uppercut this creature. Only for it to jump, to go with the punch. As something would drip onto his hand, but he would shake it off. He even rub it on his or pant leg, thinking that it was just a little bit of liquid out of her mouth. And she would land on her extra ligaments. And she would right herself. And she would see him shake his hand and wipe whatever it was off the back of his hand. As her eyes would widen and go into a grin. And she would scuttle towards him, then go up onto one leg to do a spin kick. Only for her leg to get grabbed. And his arm to come back, well, by his left hand, and his right arm to come down on top of her, or leg, as there would be an audible crack. As this creature would scream out in pain. As she would use her other leg to kick him away. And she would scuttle back and hold on to her busted right leg. You are going to be a tough one to take down. You yes, should see, well, three ice, well, punches coming at her face. And she'd dodge and duck. She'd even deflect one of them. And she'd shake her hand and breathe hot air onto it. <sighs> Damn, that's cold. Worse than hers. If she'd seen that he had vanished, where did he... If she'd feel something crack her in the back of the head. If she'd swipe, well, three of her legs, well, three of her spider legs out. If she'd hit nothing, if she'd feel something crack her in the back, like right in the spine. And she'd stumble, then throw a fist upwards, hitting something. And she'd feel something rip off of her back, causing her to scream out in absolute agony. And she'd feel something drip down her front. And she'd see two of her legs had gone. And she screams in absolute anger. And she turns around to see her assailant throwing her two legs away. And she then catches him shaking his hand again. And as he even looks at his hand to see what the hell's happening. She growls, but the growl had that of a smile. And she'd run this time. Well, she'd run on two different legs, considering her right leg, leg is absolutely busted. As her cheeks would puff out, as the guy, as Sub-Zero, would look to her, as he'd see a purple liquid flying at him, as he'd stomp on the ground, as a, well, with his right foot, as a, well, wall of ice would appear, splitting her attack in two, so it missed, missed him. As you then hear, ting, 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 and so look around, only to narrowly miss, well, one of her sharp feet, 
going past his eyes. As you do roll, as, the, as this creature, a gleam in excitement. As you do several more kicks, throw a few punches, and try to swipe at him with his with her uh, extra appendages, growing steadily more and more frustrated, but more and more amused, as his hand going or well, constantly shaking until it finally falls to his side, completely numb and paralysed. You should see him just hold up one arm, that of his left, considering his right is now no longer available. His eyes would gleam with, well, excitement. And she would cackle, saying that this night is over. This little dance has finished. He is now hers. And she'd launch another one last attack. As the guy would dodge her, well, her extra appendages, but get slammed in the face by a foot. Not that of her broken one, broken leg, that is. As he would go flying back, as he'd hit a pillar. Ugh. Ugh. Yes, the woman would cackle with glee, saying, well, I should even throw webs on him. And she would walk to him as his eyes slowly pan up to hers. It should smirk an evil smirk. As he'd hear something snap back into place, as he look to her right leg, and she easily moves it around. As he then see the two ligaments they ripped off steadily regrow. Now that I have chance to regain, you're definitely interesting. You're definitely worth the fight. But now I'm hungry. She would cackle with a little bit of, well, madness, but that of glee. And she would fire her own web from her back up, and she would climb up the web like a spider. Yes, the guy would turn his left hand into a, that of a, well, bladed edge, as he'd start moving his hand to cut the, well, to cut the web with this woman, one minute guys, with this woman she would find her two other guests, both of them huddled it should evilly well, smirk. It should just say, Hello, ladies. As both of them would pale. In her eyes, she could see them both pale. <laughs> oh, how sweet and how precious. They both feel at least a hand to gently rub their cheeks, causing them both to, well, feel fear. Because the touch was that of, well, unresolved malice. This, they would feel something else going on. That of her feeling... Not just now their cheeks, but their necks going down their shoulders. They feel a shiver run up their spines. As the woman would evilly cackle, saying, Now which one do I consume? Hmm, it's 
pink cat. So I can have a very tasty treat. Or the brunette. With her equally as good figure. Hmm. I have already tasted a bit of your blood each. And both of you are too sweet for me. Hmm. I wonder if turning you into one of me will be a good choice. Maybe put something inside you. Incubation. It was both the girl's eyes would widen in fear as they heard the word of incubation. Hmm, no. Seems like a waste of your talents. Being made into brood mothers, that is. As their eyes would widen in the word of brood mother, it's, well, the pinkette caddis would stutter, stay, stay away from us. This, this woman would evilly glint at Caddis. I don't think I will. I think, I think you're about to die. What? This should get socked in the side of the face. This should go flying. I should stand. How did you get out of that? My ice can be more than what it seems. These both girls would lighten up at his more well, gruff yet somewhat well hopeful tone or glad tone. They don't know how they knew that he was glad, but I don't care at this point. You! I'll make sure that you'd never be able to get back up. Ever again. At least not until I'm done with you. If you'd charge, tackling him and running out the door. It's both Caddis and her friend would stand. Come on, Caddis, I have to get out of here. I agree. As they both start running. Both of their feet tapping it, well, slapping against the floor. They hear the fight go on and on and on. As both of them would be pretty much running. As they'd ask, well, Candace would ask, where's the exit? I don't know, I'm just running in one direction. <sighs> Lucy, we're gonna get ourselves caught. Don't worry, we'll be fine. There, clothes shop, we can get some clothes there. There's nothing in there. You're right. Where do we, you're not going anywhere. This Lucy would push Caddis away this Lucy would be sent into the store. This Lucy would find herself covered in webs. With only a head revealed, her mouth was covered. This Caddis would have a mouth covered too. This Caddis and well, Lucy could see the legs coming out of this woman. She had more bru well had bruises and cuts now. Her face showed a bit of anger. But they wouldn't see their uh, well, saviour anywhere. Is well they'd both be thrown into the well, long abandoned clothes store. As this thing in their eyes would walk up to them with that of a peeved look. But the peevedness wasn't at them. It was at whoever was attacking her, Sub-Zero, 
if they remembered rightly. It's this thing appears to be letting off a bit of an ooze from her, well, from her extra limb, ligaments. These both girls would pale as they both tried to, well, wiggle back to get away, only for both girl, one of them, to be dragged. As Caddis would let out muffled screams, as Lucy would be trying to get freed. As she would watch Caddis being hoisted up towards the woman's ch bare chest. As both girls hadn't realised that she had lo lost the clothes that she was wearing. As well, bare skin would touch bare back. As Lucy would see Caddis's, well, last fragment of clothes fall off. As Caddis would go limp. As, well, Lucy's eyes would widen. As she thought she just saw something go into Caddis. As she could see the, this thing's eyes showing, well, rolled up into the into its skull. As her face shows that of, well, completion. As something would come back out of Caddis, as she would gently put Caddis down to the ground. As Lucy would pale in Caddis's direction, as, the thing, as this woman would slowly bring Caddis up to lie right next to her, as Lucy would see Caddis's eyes showing that of, well, fear, and her mouth would be open with drool coming out, and Lucy's eyes would widen further. It's kind of seemed to be paralysed, paralysed in fear, but apparently also drooling about something. It's, she would then see the thing above her, as her Mouth would be wide as she seems to be licking her lips. Time to finish what I started. She'd lure herself to, well, for her legs to carry or pick up, well, Lucy. Only for her to have receive a spear in the back made out of ice, causing her to drop the girl, turn around and charge. Once more, as Lucy would struggle to get out here in the fighting, she would get out of the webs, finally, and slowly tear off the, well, web over her mouth. And she would just whisper, Caddis! 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 His Caddis would be unresponsive. And she'd just panic, and she'd put her head next to Caddis's chest, and she'd hear a heartbeat. Oh, Caddis, come on. And she'd just pick her up and run. Pretty much just darting back again, past the fight. And she'd then see pretty much the saviour of theirs. She just licks her lips, seeing his muscles, as his chest is more exposed. As she would just say, damn. Well, in her mind, she would just say, hot damn. I would not mind feeling those any time, sometime soon. Wait, what am I thinking? You barely know him. 
This should just run. In the fight. What did you do to that girl? Nothing you need to be aware of, Sub-Zero. I'll kill you. You can try. This would both fight. With Sub-Zero grabbing her arms, actually twisting them in different angles, calling her to scream. We should kick him in the knee, causing him to go down on his right. While his left is out, and she would kneecap him in the face. Then tangle him up in webs and slam him to the ground once, twice, three times. Then she'll throw him over her head and slam him again three times into the opposite side. Then she'll spin him around and around and around and throw him. This time throwing webs to stick him to the wall. Then she'll go after her prey. For the second well, for the third time. Well, for the second time, really. Is Lucy would find a... Well... Find somewhere to hide. Is She would pant while still having Cadis... Well, in her arms. And she'd lean Cadis up against where they were. And she'd see her eyes had actually closed, seeing that the fear had finally gotten to her. <sighs> Thank God. Let's just hope that thing doesn't find us. Appears that that guy has once more gotten himself knocked out. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Oh, shit! And she'd quickly duck, duck seeing the creatures... Well, the creature finally arriving outside of the... Uh, store that they were in. But luckily for her, there was glass that was smashed, showing outside of where they were. And she would see it, pretty much look around. Eventually it would scamper off one way. Going completely a different way. Luckily for Lucy, that is. She let out a breath she didn't know she was holding. And she'd finally get up after 20 minutes of seeing if that thing would come back. She'd finally get up, grab Luke, well, grab, well, Cadis, and begin moving again. Yes, she would. She would look one way, seeing nothing, look the other, see nothing either, then she would look up, the see or oh, nothing either, and she would slowly let our breath, and she would walk away, well, one way, just in case, and she would move, she would then see a shadow, well, she would walk near some glass that shows the moonlight. Then, because it was bright enough, she would see a shadow. And she would look towards the glass, she would see the thing looking at her. And she would panic and she would start running. The thing would jump on her, causing her to basically scream. And then suddenly disappear. With her into a darkened room, really. Is she would hit the floor with Cadis underneath her. Is Cadis would slowly wake up groaning. Is Cadis would just groan, saying, "What happened? Where are we?" You should just hear someone curse, saying, "Damn it! We'd have thought that would have knocked you out for longer." Huh? What? As Cadis was about to scream, only to have a web cover her mouth. And then herself getting covered in webs as well. Now shut up, little morsel. No thanks to that sub-zero character. I am losing patience. It's tw <sighs> It's tw 
12 p.m. Well, it's 11.30 p.m. Almost midnight. I don't have time. No, yeah, she'd... Well... Candace would see her friend's clothes get shredded. As Lucy tries to cover her... Well, womanhood. Only for her arms to be paralysed. As... Well... Candace would see something enter her friend. Causing her to... Sign, well, scream, well, into her covered mouth. As this creature would once again have the eyes, it looks like it's being complete again. Lucy could see it, Caddis could see it. Caddis's eyes would widen, as Lucy would, her head would slump. But luckily, Candace would see her fear. Her mouth, obviously closed by the, well, web, couldn't let out a single scream of pain. Is this thing, well, it seemed to be enjoying itself. As whatever went inside of Lucy would come out and vanish. As Lucy would fall, gracefully unconscious. As Candace would then begin struggling, only for the webs to be destroyed and her to be hoisted. Once more, this time she would kick the monster, only causing it to growl in her ear. And she would put something back in her again, paralysing Candace. As both girls would be paralysed. As the creature would gleefully, well, watch Candace's head slump. As her job would be done finally. As she'd finally, well, lay Candace down after 20 seconds. And she'd look to them both. That will keep you down for a while. You should rub her hands up and down the girl's body or bodies, trying to pick out the more, well, adequate parts for herself to steal when she kills them, well, sucks them both dry. Sucks them both dry. You she would measure her own, well, breasts against the girls. She'd sneer, saying they're both big, bigger than mine. I want them. And she would, well, get ready. But then she'd have an epiphany. You know what? I think Spider Brood can wait. I think they will make a perfect brood mothers too. Hmm, decisions, decisions. Who do I transfer transform to a spider brood mother first? And who do I turn second after she watches the pleasure of turning? Hmm. Pinky with big boobs, or the brunette with big boobs? Hmm. You should look at them both, both with fear in their eyes. You should gasp, saying, that's it. I'll turn you first, Caddis. And something would come out of her, well, undercarriage. She moan, saying, "It's been some time since I've had this out. This will transfer a bit of a bit of my DNA into you to make you turn. I think you'll love my gift." We should crawl over Caddis. As well, 
she would begin placing it just at the right area. She'd slowly begin pushing in. The catalyst would start waking. And she'd paralyze her once more, knocking her out. And she'd just say, no, not yet. I haven't got myself in. You yet. You are definitely gonna give of a pleasurable sight. You should, well, begin pushing deeper and deeper. Almost. Almost there. I can feel us becoming one. You will be perfect. I'll give you that. Now, do not wake up. Yes, she would reach a place that she knew to be. Yes, I will begin soon. <laughs> but first, you should see Lucy. You should put two fingers in front of Lucy's, well, hole. I wonder how firm you will be once you turn as well. And she will begin to move in, in and out of Cadis. As her face would show pleasure. Well, Cadis would slowly wake. Her moans. Alerting her that she's waking. And she would just smirk saying, good. Good. You're gonna moan. You're gonna wish for more. You should crawl over Cadis once more. As Cadis would struggle. As her, well, her, her feet would make a perimeter around them both. As whatever was in Cadis would move, making Cadis moan even more. As Cadis wouldn't even resist. Good. Good. Do not resist the pleasure. Do not resist my gift. You should whisper it into Cadiz's ear. This Cadiz would panic. You should begin kicking this creature. Too late. I can feel it. It's too late. I'm about to give you my gift. She wouldn't feel her felt self being pulled out. Just when she sh shouts, Join me! This little caddis would scream. This, well, the woman looked look down, seeing that she had completely missed. What? This then she'd feel something pierce her chest, and something coming out the front. <laughs> what the? You're, you're dead now. How did you find us? You talk too much. Now die. No. Not. Not yet. Yes, her heart would be pulled out from her back. And she'd look towards, well, this guy. As the man would stare at her with cold, cold eyes. Is this woman would fall slump in front of Cadis. This Cadis had passed out due to the fear. So he would walk over to Lucy. Are you all right? And she would be out cold as well. With this woman, with her last dying breath, I will 
never d d die like this. She could see behind herself, seeing that the woman, that the girl she was piercing, Cadis, still wide open. And she'd will herself slowly enough to begin entering her again. And she would just reach the same place. And she would, well, release, well, herself from life. And she could feel her, well, last bit of her essence racing down into, well, a newer place. And she would grin. Well, she would, if she didn't fully die. His last, well, as her uh, gift just starts pouring itself in to Cadus. With Cadus, her body begins, well, not to do anything really. But she does twitch a few times. Mainly because, well, something had entered her. Again. And, well, Cadis doesn't know it. Because A, she's unconscious. And B, well, the thing's dead, anyway. But she doesn't realise that she'd also been picked up as well. With, the ba with this man, he would see that the thing he'd killed put itself back in her again. And it seemed like she was trying again to pour whatever was left into the girl known as Cadis. As he would have just managed to get her to a point of where the transformation would never be able to take place. As you'd see the liquid pour out of Cadiz's uh, womb, or canal, really. As you'd just sigh, saying that that was too close. And he's had shaves in the past. As he would walk out from this place, as he would find, well, finally get out, go to the same warehouse he was in, and backtrack. After a few days, the girls would wake up. Both of them would moan in exhaustion, and both would see that they're both, mm, well, no longer naked. So both of them would wonder how the hell they got these clothes on them. Be aware, they're wearing the same stuff as Sub-Zero. Just minus the face masks and that. Is they'd see a fire going off in, well, pretty much outside of their location. They said, head out. Just pretend they're on top of a, an abandoned, well, not an abandoned building, just a, well, yeah, just an abandoned building, but one that was kept in good condition. It hadn't been abandoned for long. As both girls would walk out, pretty much seeing the, well, a guy in a mask with, well, fogged over eye, eyes looking at them both. I assume you guys have had a good rest. As both girls would nod. As, well, he would, this guy would nod too. Good. Now sit down. I wish to speak to you about what you have seen. As both girls would actually sit on the floor, although reluctantly, because they fear that something's going to pop up and rape them. As the guy would kneel, 
down, pretty much looking at them both. Hang on a <clears throat> I am Sub Zero. If you wish to join me in hunting down these monsters that prey on us all, just say the word to stop young girls and boys like yourselves from getting the same treatment. It's, well, at least he would put a hand up. What is it? Um, score, uh, sub-zero, um, take your time, Miss Lucy. Lucy Newgate. Well, Miss Newgate, take your time, please. You don't look older than us. We're, we're both 16. Who are you, truly? That's something I cannot explain for now. Earn my respect and trust, and I will tell you. Capiche? Yes, of course. Um, what happened to me? I, I fell unconscious. She, that thing, was raping you. This cat is shiver and cover her lower region. Did, did anything happen? I think that thing was trying to turn you into one of its own. Oh no. Please kill me. I... Don't worry. It never got the chance to finish its... misdeeds. Oh, thank God. <clears throat> you good? Let's just say me and him do not have a good relationship for some odd reason. I see. Do you go to school by any chance? Yes, the same school you two go to. Cool. If we knew a superhero like you were in our school, we would be friends with you. Perhaps. Speak to Hiyoto Issei. He'll point you out to me. Issei? But he's blind. Yeah, like, really blind. He can. He has a walking... He has even got a stick to help him walk. Indeed. But he still has this and these. As he'd point to his nose and his ear. Right, he still has his nose and ears. I guess his nose and ears are picking up the picking up the pace for his eyesight. Indeed. Now, would you two like to go home? You've been here since Friday, uh, since Friday night. Your parents will be worried. Right, but our clothes, they're destroyed and they had all of our stuff in them. You mean like these? Does he pull out or purses, phones? He'd even well, give him some extra clothes. Thank you. This both girls would actually hug him, which makes him stiffen up a bit. But we'd pat them both on the back. It's okay. Now get off of me, please. Right. These both girls would just sheepishly scratch the back of their heads. As they'd both bow. As they'd both pick up their phones and quickly call their parents, saying that they were attacked. But someone saved them and took them to his place to keep them, keep them safe, at least for a few days. They couldn't contact their parents because they were worried of getting them in or getting them caught in the crossfire. This cat doesn't even explain that she was almost raped by some of the thugs until their mysterious saviour savior came along and saved them. Obviously, avoiding the whole giant woman that looks like a... well, that has spider legs and could uh, transform people into another spider woman like herself. All was Sub-Zero was smirking to himself. As he'd say inwardly, 
They have the fire that I've been looking for. They're fighters. Time skip. Cool Academy. Monday. Yes, I'm saying Monday because it was Sunday that when they spoke to their parents. Is both Callus and Lucy would be waiting at the gates for Hiyoto Issei. As they would basically see a boy with brown hair. Well, a tall boy, really, with brown hair. And a, uh, well, stick of sorts. To kind of see where he's going. And his eyes closed. As Callus would walk up. As Issei would hear her. Look. One way, but then looked the other after noticing that the footsteps was coming from the right side. Can I help you? Hey, you say? Ah, um, Cadiz, right? That's me. Glad to know you. Glad to see you know my name. <laughs> and I can tell your facial colour. Well, tell you by your hair colour too. After all, everybody speaks about your pink hair. <laughs> Thanks. Um. You say, um, I'm going to whisper this into your ear, okay? Yeah, sure. Uh, go ahead. Do you know anybody by the name of Sub Zero? He said you'd point, you would point him out to us. Ah, my old friend. <laughs> I take it you guys have met him. Swell guy, huh? Swell guy. He he saved us from being raped. I see. Um. <laughs> Well, I can point you out to him, but he's not here. <laughs> he does come to the school, but not all the time, but not often. <laughs> Believe it or not, he actually works pretty much most of the time. None of the teachers remember him at all. He is, even though he's a bit of a big guy. <laughs> How can you tell? <laughs> Me and Sub Zero used to be used to be childhood friends long before I lost my eyesight. So you knew what he was like? Oh yeah, <laughs> I knew what he was like. Long before I lost my eyesight, I knew him. Played games with him, played football with him. Hell, played a bit of basketball with him. But then the accident happened and this happened. So, yeah. I see. Um, well, until he turns up, do you mind if we stay near you? Sure. Just to let you know, he doesn't take kindly to people uh, bullying his only, well, one of his only friends. <laughs> really? He doesn't like it? No. He is one hell of a protective guy, let me tell you. This one time, before this happened, a kitten was being bullied by a bunch of, well, a bunch of teenagers, thinking that it's funny to bully a little kitten. Like, literally, a little, a little putty cat. I actually got the putty cat at home, actually. Still lives with me. Really? What happened? He beat their asses. That guy is a monster when he's angry. <laughs> That's always to protect people. Never to truly, like, kill or hurt. It's always to protect. The guy is swell. He is... Caddis, you would fall in love with him. <laughs> Well, I wanted to truly thank him without the mask. He wears a mask now? <laughs> Damn it, Subby. Really? Subby? Yeah, he likes to be known as Sub-Zero, but I call him Subby sometimes. Oh, the man is a cheeky man. I told him playing that vid those video games would always give him bad ideas. What's next? Scorpion, eh? <laughs> Not funny, you say. Seriously. Come on, YouTube. We're going to be late. Uh, Lucy, right? That's me. Now, come on, champ. Let's get you in before, you know, class starts. Ah, oh, right. Oh, my caretaker's still helping me out with my paperwork, with my homework. Uh, here. Wait, what are you doing? Helping you along. Give me that. Giving you a walking aid. Uh, hey! Just let, just let us do it, you say, okay? It makes your friend a lot more happier if we're giving you a hand. 
I'm not handicapped. You kind of are with this walking stick. <laughs> yeah, it's to help me know where I'm going. Who do you think I am? The daredevil or something? Didn't stop you before when we were younger. Hey! As Candace and Issei would just chuckle about it, while Lucy would be a little bit confused. Uh, What did he used to do? He used to do a lot of parkour while blinded. While blindfolded. Seriously? Seriously? You'd do that? Well, I used to. I wish I still could, but again, this. Do you mind putting your head there? Whoops, sorry. Got a good pair though. Hey! What? Why are you going to comment her? Look, sorry, Candace, okay? Do you really want me to start acting like a perv like those two? <sighs> yeah, no, I wouldn't even mind it. What was that? Nothing. Huh. Did you catch any of that? Mm, not really. If you look at Candace, as Candace would look at her with a blush, and she would just say, beat it, well, mouth to her, beat ya, yeah, to him having me first. As Candace would glare, and mouth, he's mine. As Lucy would pull down her, well, put her arm up to her eye, pull down her eyelid and stick her tongue out. As Candace would pretty much do the same, but also flip her off at the same time by doing that saying, again, he's mine. Spliff girls would just argue about it with, you say, pretty much just wondering what the hell's going on. In class, the teacher would go on about their work. Issei would do his own work, kind of, with the teacher's help. Eventually, he would get it done. With the teacher finally saying, all right, class, put down your work and go for lunch. Is he so would? Is... Issei would actually say, hey, do you two have face? Do you two have um, WhatsApp? WhatsApp? Yeah. There's something about Subby that you need to know. He does use a phone. I pretty much get, I pretty much talk to him afterwards. My support worker sends him all the paperwork they need to do. Yeah, we got, we got WhatsApp, why? Well, if you give, well, if I, you give, write down your WhatsApp names on my arm, on my hand here, or even uh, here on my arm, I'll be able to send, well, able to get my support worker to send him your friend friend requests. How about we just write it on a piece of paper for you? Sure. Uh, actually, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> You're a dope. You really do know that, right? I try not to be. Yes, both girls would give him their their WhatsApp names. Is you say would just well feel it being put in his hand. Both girls just put it to his chest. <laughs> what the hell are you two doing? As both of them would glare at each other. As they both say with a little bit of venom. Just hoping you wouldn't forget it. As both girls would glare. As he say would feel a bit of deja vu. Because he felt like he heard that from somewhere again. Well. That's good enough for my rump. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, bell's about to... As the bell would go off. Go off. Uh, we better get back to class. Those both girls would just drag him. Uh, hey! Uh, I better get used to this. Is the day would come to an end. As he say would go to a, well, be escorted to a place, basically his original home. As they would open the door, there would be a woman there to help out. A woman that no that they have seen nowhere before, and should politely take, well, Yoto Issei. See you two. See you tomorrow. 
See ya. Bye. I'll see if Scorpy will... Well, not Scorpy. Subby will get in contact with you. Subby? My friend. Oh. This door shut. It'll be locked. <sighs> As he says, eyes would open, revealing a foggy, or well, foggy eyes, without a coldness coming off of them. <sighs> <laughs> well, it looks like I will have sidekicks by now. Yes. Well, the hologram. Well, the woman would turn into a hologram. Well, I can say this, Master. This was interesting. Indeed. Indeed it was. Did you get the identification of that woman that I killed on Friday night? Yes, Master. She was called Olivia Kulvac. Olivia Kulvac, the woman who went missing 14 years ago. Yes, that is her. How did she turn into a creature like that? She was a scientist and she created that in a serum-like form. There's an image of a syringe with, with the serum inside it would be there. I got this off of the database that she was working at at one point. She was very scary. She scared a lot of the employees and the employers, or the employees and her boss, did her unethical experimentation on, well, bugs at first. But then she wanted something a bit bigger, like a person. Yes, like a person. When they refused her, she killed her boss and left. She had been missing ever since. Is there any of that serum still remains? Yes, in fact, I have managed to download the effects off of their database. They thought they had scrubbed it clean so nobody could ever use it again. But there are always backup drives that they do not check. At least they would see it. See the syringe with what the liquid would have looked like, possibly. Any video recordings? No, but there are, are audio logs. Here, take a listen. This is Olivia's... This is Olivia Pearson. Log one. I am here today at such and such lab to create the next step in human evolution. I will hopefully create a serum to push forward genetic genomes in the human body for increased strength, intelligence, and general body enhancement through genetic DNA. My first subject is going to have its venom extracted. It is a spider of the venomous class. What kind of venomous class? The red spider back. The red, the spider with the red line on, it, on its back. That singular red line. One found in Australia. It can be found in different places, but mainly Australia. Yes. Damn. That woman is, cr is crazy. Tell me about it. Take two. This is Olivia Pierce. The, experiment, the extraction of the red back spider's venom is complete. I had to actually get two of them and get their venom. Now I have dissected them both, and both of them are male and female. Combining them together has unlocked a specific trait in them both. I am going to need an experiment to experiment on this personally. Olivia Pierce, month, June, 20, 
Mar well, June 2012. Well, 2012. The date is the 7th. My pushes to have a host for the strain has not borne fruit. I wanted someone who would be willing to be a test subject. Willing, not forced, but willing. My boss says that is unethical. For starters, it's just bugs. This was only meant to be a simple step into gene modification. Bastards. June 12th, 2012. The assholes, they have completely ruined my research. They have dumped it down, saying that it's inhumane. All they asked was a simple person, a person who would, who was on, either on death row or somebody like that. Just someone, and they go and get me fired. Well then, lucky for me, I have got one of the strain with me now. If they will not use, allow me to use somebody for my so-called unethical experiment, then I'll have to use myself. And plus, my boss wouldn't mind, after I killed him, that is. And now a wanted person, or a wanted woman. I should feel flattered. Well, let's see what they say about this wanted woman. Instead, here's something to clink on the floor. Report back in a few days. This is Olivia Pearson. March 2023 or 2013. My changes are complete. Oh, I feel stronger already, but oh, I need a constant doses of blood, flesh and anything else to keep me alive. It's not what I wanted personally. But I feel stronger, more alive than I've ever felt. But I've also got this drive to push myself onto others and turn them. I had one willing subject, a man I had coerced. I loved him as he loved me. And our night of passion was glorious. But when I pushed myself into him, he exploded into pieces after a few days. Now I have to run again, but his memory will always be with me. July. 2013. It's been a while, again, since I've last reported. I have run a few tests after breaking into a few uh, science labs. <clears throat> I have found out that my strain mutates. It needs female hosts. Unfortunately for one of the Scientists, she was in the room. No cameras, no nothing. But once I explained my genius to her, she was all too happy to try and call the f cops on me. So I pulled her towards me. And, well, I put myself in her and covered her mouth with a web. But I pulled it off after a while, after hearing her moaning out for more. I found my second host. 
I pushed myself in further. And she loved it. She cried, wanting more of it. I asked her, does she love it? Does she always want this, this pleasure? Her shaking was all the answer I needed because her mind had her eyes rolling into the back of her head with her just muttering, I want more and more of it. I asked her to become my first ever brood mother. I pushed myself into her more often and she was screaming out my name. She called me the matriarch and she would be my first, well, brood mother. End of that. Hmm. November 2013. I am amazed. This woman, she has completely turned. She has craved for her first, well, hatch of spiderlings. I have pushed myself in her and gave her more of myself. I have witnessed her give birth to multiple spiderlings. All of them have suckled from her milkiness. And they've all began growing strong and tall. But unfortunately they have all died after a while. Apparently they are only for quick infections. From what I could gather from a site, from another lab that I've broken into. Apparently they need a different strain altogether. I guess I have to make new adjustments. Although she is quivering in, a, in anticipation for our next round. I think I'll give that to her now. The woman's absolutely a psycho. This is the last one, sir. February 2014. She's dead. The woman is dead. She craved it so much, and I gave her so, so much of myself. No matter how many times she birthed numerous babies for us, she just couldn't get them to stay little forever. She craved so much. Then in the end, I had to kill her. I'm now here in Japan. In Kuo. I have already scouted out Kuo Academy. It's an all-girls school. Soon to be coad. I've already got my eyes on a few girls. I see a redhead, but... She seemed dangerous. There's a boy with brown hair and his eyes closed. Hmm. He seems strong, but I know that I cannot have him explode if I push myself into him. But if he pushes himself into me and releases, I may actually get the strain that I need. But for now, there are two girls. A pinkette and a brunette. Their bodies aren't, f well, are filling out. I'll wait until their second year. Second year going up to third. And, well, more will come soon. And, wait, that's not it. Here's another one. I believe this... Yes, this is definitely the last one. June. Well, January. No, June. 2014. I... I have marked them both. They are ready. 
I lure them towards a shopping mall. I am currently using a old warehouse filled with generators as my base of operations. I have fed on the homeless for some time now. Hell, I've even had a few uh, scrupulous people ploughing me from my rear. But I would not allow them to go into my womb or into my, well, lower lips. Um, I need someone stronger than them to give me what I want. That boy is blind, but I can clearly see that he works out. He's not as blind as everybody thinks he is. Hmm. But on my travels, I had seen this woman with silver hair throwing ice around supernaturally. I guess there's another genome that has been unlocked that I didn't know about, so the bastards have used my own research to unlock human evolution. Most probably used unethical sources as well. I have to pay that company a visit, the wretched bastards. But first, to take down that company, I'm going to need an army of spiderlings. And I'm going to need multiple brood mothers. Those two girls I found out were Lucy Newgate and Caddis. No last name, unfortunately. Those two have already been marked by me. I placed a little mark on, well, on both of their cheeks, on their butts. So I'd always be able to track them. Tonight is the night I will turn, well, tonight's the night I will turn them both into brood mothers. I'll make them think I'll eat them. But I'm also being hunted. I feel like there's ice crawling up my spine every time I see them. And I see that boy. He always seems to look in my direction as if he's already told, already can tell where I am. Even if I am a few miles, well, literally on top of a building, lying down so nobody can see me. With binoculars. He looks right at me every time. I don't know how he does it, but I'll find out how. And that is the last one. She has never reported one ever again. <sighs> well, at least she's dead. Indeed. But there's something off. There's another experiment that had gone wrong by a scientist named Alex... or... Yeah, Alex to to Donna? Alex to Donna? Heard of him? No, but it sounds like a freak show. Yes, well, apparently he turned himself into some sort of raving lunatic. <laughs> apparently something had happened to him long ago and he's now gone general he went generally insane after finding something that he shouldn't have done claim that there's an invasion coming and they need to turn themselves into true warriors. Some sort of experiment went awry and he went missing with his experiment. Rumours is that he's somewhere here in Japan. Thank you, Grace, for letting me know about this. Don't worry about it. Oh, and that strange woman, Rias, you told me to look into. Did you find anything? She does not turn up anywhere in Japan dental records. There's not even a birth certificate for her here. There is none for Sona Satori either. Satori isn't even her last name. That's odd. What about the council itself? The student council all have birth certificates here in the world, including that of the orc. Mostly. Mostly? There's one. The one you call the mascot of Kuo. Kaneko. Yes, apparently she has not 
got a birth certificate here either. She is a p the petite girl, right? Well, yeah. Good. Master, we got company. I sense them too now. I've got too caught up with you. Yes, well, Grace will resume the role of the helper. We should go towards the door, as he say would quickly make his way to the, well, kitchen slash dining room, sitting down, looking like he's getting ready to do his work, well, doing his work, with his eyes closed. And Grace would float up to the door and see it. And she'd see somebody with, well, red hair. Hmm. You should open the door. May I help you? Hello, I'm looking for Issei Heidi. You're in the right place, but I don't see why I should let you in. Please, this is important. The two girls he was with earlier, they have suddenly gone missing. What do you mean? They were just here a few minutes ago. Uh, Grace? As you say, would walk around, holding on to stuff. Who is it? It's... it's me, Rios Grimmery. Uh, we've spoke a few times before. Ah, Grimmery-san, um... Uh, what is it? Cadiz and Lucy Newgate have gone missing. Uh, what do you mean? That's what I mean. They've gone missing. You were the last one who spoke to them. They seemed perfectly fine to me. Grace, where did they go? They went home. Did you check their homes? Their parents are still ser searching for them. This is not good. Why not? Because those two started acting nice towards me, and they wanted to know about my friend. Uh, apparently he saved them both from being raped. You see. Well, could you contact this friend? Sure, I can contact him. Grace, I'm on it. This Grace would turn around. I'll get my friend on it. Uh, he'll be here in a few few hours. He usually is pretty quick. He's also a pretty quick. Uh, he's also a quick person to uh, act. He's not a uh, slowpoke. You see, he's on his way. Go. I'll take him to your. I'll take you to your room quickly. Sure. Can we come in? We want to be here when he turns up. He's already gone. He just went past you. I didn't sense him. That's because you can't sense him anyway. If you don't feel his presence, then he doesn't want you to see him. I can tell he went past because he let one of his feet let out an audible snap sound. We didn't hear it. You don't have ears like me. I heard it loud and clear. Uh, by the way that went, he went uh, that way. Thank you. As both girls would get out. And quickly, well, Rias would quickly get out. Ain't Grace, Grace. Sir? Prepare my suit. I'll get ready. Good idea, Master. I'll keep an eye on those two girls from the sky and let you know if they're still outside. Please do. And Zuko would leave, go upstairs, change with the girls outside. Arkana? Did you believe him? I don't know, Rias. He didn't seem like he was lying. Yeah. Didn't seem like it. But who knows? I take it you two needed me. <clears throat> There's a nice barrier would turn up around them. What the hell? Yes? Up on the top there, look. This is see a guy with muscles as he would jump down and land in front of him. Cadis and Newgate have gone missing. I see.
Well, not gone missing enough, because I've already found them and rescued them. Thank you very much. How? Easy. My friend told me that he had two suspicious girls looking for me. And what should I do with you now? Well, for starters, so much for our plan of tricking you. Or tricking Issei to show us where you are. Apparently you're near those two girls all the time. Indeed. Now, what do you want? I want you to show us who you really are underneath that mask. <laughs> As if I would even show you. Fine. Do it. As we hear a roar. What the? As his ice would break. Revealing this monstrosity. As both all three would jump away. Arcano? Barrier up. Nobody will see us. Where did he come from? That must be the scientist experiment that went awry here in Japan. That thing's an experiment? Yes, it is. Oh, cross your bones! And eat them well! Damn, that thing's ugly. Tell me about it. Of course that thing looks ugly. Well then, all three of us might want to take him down. And what was that barrier thing you were talking about? Look up. What happened to the sky? That would be our doing. As Sub-Zero looked at him, as he would see wings pop out of their backs. What in the hell? I can't... I can't think about that right now. What are you, free? A freak show of a circus? Damn, this guy's loud. Arcano? As Arcano would fire lightning, only for him to slap it back at her. What the? As Arcano would get shocked. And she'd even scream out in pain. Because a lightning attack actually hurt her quite badly. The readers would go over to Arcano and actually f hold her in her arms as she lands on the ground. As Arcano would slowly gro well, groan and slowly get up as her hair goes all fuzzy. Well, I guess turning up the temperature would be a good thing, Rius. Not funny, Arcano. Not funny. <laughs> As he say, would jump next to them, or jump in front of them. As he would slam his foot into the ground, making an ice spear go up into the thing. <laughs> As he gets sent back by the attack. Beer's ice does the job well enough. Got any power behind your your attacks, supernatural beings? As he'd hear, feel something powerful come up behind him, as he'd see a red ball of energy. What's the basketball gonna do? It's called destruction. As Rios would throw it, as Sub Zero actually had to duck. Whoa! Unfortunately, he'd take off half of his, well, top of his mask off, revealing his hair. As the thing would roar, Smash the ice, but then get hit with destruction as it would suddenly disintegrate. What in the hell? Issei? Huh? You're not Issei Haidu! Damn it! You're not blind at all! Uh, uh, no, no I'm not. Oh, I just act blind. I've been like this all my life. <sighs> something, I, something I tell people just to keep them away from my eyes. <laughs> I thought I recognised that ice from somewhere. Really? Who? Grafia. My stepsister. 
I think I just sat down with my nephew. What are you talking about? I need to say hi to. I don't know this Grafia woman. Grafia Lucifuge is your mother. Your biological mother. I would recognize that ice attack anywhere. You can't be serious. I've lived here all my life. Maybe true, but I know that attack from anywhere. Arcano? I'll contact Lucifer and me. I'll contact Sersex immediately. He's going to have to make sure it's actually real or not. There could be just another ice user out there. And explain his wings that are of devil origin. Huh? What are you t talking about? Where did they come from? Never mind. I think he is a devil. Devil? God's grace? <clears throat> yep, definitely devil. <sighs> Did you have to say his name? Going anywhere near those churches hurts me. That's enough it is. But what... Devil? As in from the Bible, devils? Uh, yeah. You're one of us. I just contacted Sersex. Oh, he'll be here soon. Who's Sersex? He's a Satan. One of the four Satans. There used to be, like, several dozen others, but there's now only four. You'll understand soon enough. Oh, my head. As a red circle would appear. As a man with... Well... Dark... Uh, well... With armour bathed in darkness, with golden trims... With red hair and blue eyes that show a fire. Rius, you heard something for me? Here's another ice user for you. What? Whoa. What were you guys fighting? Were you fighting him? No, brother. We're fighting some sort of freak show. Although that freak show seemed to didn't last long against my against the my power of destruction. The ice certainly did some damage. Lightning, on the other hand, not so much. Due to uh, Arcano's hair still being frizzy. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to pat that down. Hang on. Uh, well, at least you're alive and safe. Who are you? My name is Issei Haidu. Huh. You mind showing me? You mind if I take a look at your magic here? Sure, sir. Huh. Sturdy. Really sturdy, actually. Reminds me of my wife. And her ice magic. Grafia. You know my wife? Your... daughter told me. Didn't you hear me when I said brother? Wait, he's your brother? Yeah. He looks old enough to be a father. <laughs> this Rius would have a bit of an eye twitch, saying, "Yeah, you're definitely in my, you're definitely my nephew," because only Milicus would say that to me as well. Well, I, what? Who? How? Uh, how many other ice magic users do you ever see, Sirzex? I saw several. I've only seen two. Milicus doesn't have ice. He has destruction. And I have seen no other mage or magician use ice. He goes by the name of Sub-Zero whenever he's wearing that mask. And those clothes. I can't really blame him. I admit, though, looks damn cool on him. Well, thank you. I guess... Could you also not go into that deep voice? It makes you older than you look. <coughs> yeah, and it also hurts my damn throat. Well, this first sex would take a chunk off and use his magic, well, his power of destruction, to check his density. As so you'd get a feedback loop. <coughs> ah! Sussex! Ah, it's okay, it's okay. Ow! Whoa. 
This is a hand, a whole hand would freeze over. What the hell? My whole hand is frozen. Wow. Wow. Well, it's certainly more powerful than Grafia. Who's this Grafia character? Well, for starters, as he'd smashed the whole ice off of his hand with his power, whew, that was cold. Grafia is my wife. And with those wings, you're a pure blooded devil. I can tell you that. I can feel that power within you. Even without those wings. You're definitely a pure-blooded devil. Ah, that's all you're... half-human. Hmm. We'll have to go to the underworld for that. Underworld? I think I'm good here. Too late. There's a magic circle will appear underneath all of them. What the? Oh boy. He's just lost his trust. Ah! In the underworld, in a chair, or well, as a chair would appear, just as Issei would fall over. Oh, ow! The hell? Oh. Ah, sorry about that. Wait, I'm in an office? Yes, my office. <laughs> sorry, I've got a bunch of paperwork still. Hang on. The bane of every leader's ex ex existence right now. Nothing but paperwork. Is you say would hear just one person facepalm saying, "Yeah, I don't see why you brought him down in the underworld. You could have just left him in the human world, where it would make him feel a lot more comfortable, brother." <laughs> yeah, sorry. As he say, well, as he say, would see an image. As he would actually stand and walk towards it. As he would actually pick it up. What are you doing? Is this Grafia? And who's the boy? Ah, that would be my firstborn. Your firstborn. Yes. He was stolen from us. Sixteen years ago. Sorry to hear that. I think you would have been a good father. I think I'm doing well with my second son, but... Honestly... I haven't stopped searching for my firstborn ever since he was kidnapped. I could do it a lot less often due to problems down here. Such as... Riotan's uh, wedding. Wedding? She's getting married. Although I dislike the man that she's proposed to. Who? An arrogant man called Ryza Phoenix. He sees my sister as nothing but a trophy. You're a Satan, right? So you can just overrule it? Can't. The council rules us all. <sighs> Trying to figure out how to break their hold. But they've also been blocking me on finding my son. For years now. Said that he's already dead. They found his corpse. I didn't believe it even my wife did. So to keep her off of... The so-called death of our son, I gave her a new one, a new son, while I searched for our first, to prove those idiot counsels wrong, that my son is still alive. Honourable. Alright guys. You think so? Good. At least somebody thinks so. <sighs> but they've definitely got to ask. Are you ready? For what? To have some blood taken? Where did you get that needle from? That's a big question even I'm asking right now. Where did you get that from? I had it around, just in case. Kind of a self-defense mechanism, just in case. 
If somebody took me by surprise and I couldn't activate my uh, power, you're planning to take their blood from them? I was planning to slit their throats with this, but uh, the needle wouldn't get that far. Really? Uh, sorry. I was drunk at the time, okay? And I didn't bother taking it out. Thought it might be useful later on in life. Glad I wasn't wrong. Is your brother generally... <coughs> Ow! Thank you. Quick on his feet. And I'll be back. Beelzebub will go through this for me quickly. We're going to be here for a while. And... Come in. As, a door, as the door would open, as a maid, well, as a woman with silver hair and a maid outfit would walk in with basically a boy with red hair and blue eyes, and she would have silver eyes. Ah, Rius, Grafia, Milicus. Hi, Auntie. Hi, Auntie Arcano. <laughs> Hello, Milicus. Don't mind my hair. What happened? You look like you got struck by a lightning bolt. Ow! Mom! Be nice. It's okay. I kind of did get hit with my own lightning. Really? We kind of got attacked by some sort of freak show of a science experiment. Is it dead? Or is it defeated? Oh, it's more than defeated. I'm sorry. I didn't see you there. You are... His name is E.C. Heidi. Those eyes. Those eyes. I've... I've seen them before. Have we met? First time to me. No, it's the second time for me. I, I've seen them. I should have a mental flashback of a child with fogged over eyes that had a bit of silver in them. <coughs> Mom? Grafia? I can wait here. You say, stay. Uh, what's wrong with her? Grafia. My son. My son. Where's my son? Ma'am? Mom? Is it Issei would actually walk beside Milicus and actually hold him back. Wait. What's going on? Mental flashbacks. Repress, repressed memories, I think. Your mother's having a mental breakdown. Oh, see my eyes? He say, that's your name. He say, Lucifuge. What? What? So you are my nephew. You're my brother. No, I. Find him. Find him, Sussex. That damn person stole him from us. Gravia, calm down. Gravia, calm down, please. No, no, I'm good. I'm good, Sussex. Just please save our son. After a while, after a while, Grafia sort of fell unconscious due to sensory overload. And I'm back. You're late. Your wife just had a mental breakdown. What? As he rushed over to Grafia. What happened? She saw my eyes and had a mental breakdown. She claimed she'd seen us before. She asked if we had met. I said no, and she said, but she's seen my eyes before, but where? When she got close, she started touching it. Well, she put her hand to her head after sharp pain of sorts, I guess. And she started panicking. Uh, your son, Milicus, wanted to see if she's all right. I had to hold him back, just in case. I'm glad you did. And there's good news. On my end. Really? Yes. As Sussex would put his hand on Issei's shoulder. Uh. Welcome home, my son. What? You are my brother! As Milikus would just jump and hug him on the leg. I got a big bro! I got a big brother! 
as Villicus would be all excited and happy, his Issei's mind would shut down until it would restart a few hours later. I'm sorry, I just had a nightmare. Did I just get told that I'm the son of a Satan? Son of Satan? His, he would hear a feminine voice saying, No, that wasn't a dream. So he'd see a woman with silver, the same woman with silver hair, but with tears running down her eyes. And she looks for him with love and care. She just sign, or starts sobbing, saying, I found my firstborn son again. My family is complete once more. As he say, would be completely stumped. Family? Then I was adopted this whole time? Miss Grayfield would continue, actually hug him and just say that she's so sorry that she never got to find him, ever. She was so distraught after hearing from the council that he had been killed. His, Issei would hear that his mind would turn to rage as he would just say lowly that he was lied to. His biological parents weren't human at all. They were supernatural the whole time. And he... Sorry guys, I put my phone down quickly. But he was also lied to. His adoptive parents adopted him. They most probably knew he was supernatural and wanted to use him as a weapon. But he would stop, stop mid-rant as he would remember all the happy times they had. Every time that they went out somewhere, he would always be smiling. His, he would remember his first word, he would remember walking with them, going to the park, seeing a girl, well, the person he'd call friend, all the way up to him defeating the spider mother of sorts. His, he would finally come back to him having the news of having a true mother and a true father, ones who had been searching for him for years. I'm sorry, I... You should just hear... Well, Grove, you just say, shh, 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 it's okay, I forgive you. He's, he say he would just lose himself to the hug. He would just accept that he's now in a family once more. A family that wanted him. That needed him. A family that that he thought he'd never have. As he'd finally just cry out that he's home and nobody is going to take him away from this home. He'll defend it with his life. As Grafie would smile, even though she's not showing him her smile, but she is smiling. There's a heart feels warmth in it one more time. A small warmth that was there after Milicus was born, but now there's a full-blown firestorm in her heart out of having her firstborn back home and him pledging his life to the underworld to save it. And she would pull away with a smile and tears running down her eye, that running down her face, Vise slowly wiping the tears away, saying, I know this is soon. I know I haven't truly fully accepted it yet, but mother, I do not wish to see you cry. Not out of something you could never do. I will one day make the house of Lucifuge, great once more. I ask for your permission to become the heir of the house of Lucifuge.
and I will regrow it from the ground up once more. His Grofie would smile, saying that it's up to my husband and the other Satan's decision. He should smile, hearing that her son, her firstborn, wishes to take up the full name of Lucifuge. But you have to understand that the Lucifuges serve the Satans, the head Satan. So you'll be serving your father. I accept that oath. I, Issei Haidu Lucifuge, pledge my life to the Satans, to Serzix Lucifer himself. I am yours to command. That won't be necessary, my son. L Lucifer. Rise. There is no Lucifer here. Just a father. Just a father, his sons, and his wife. After a few hours of talking, Issei telling them all what happened through his trap, through his life, all the way up to dealing with the spider woman and that thing. And Serzex would feel disgusted out of a woman experimentation, experimentations on herself, then creating almost a race of spiderlings, of spider people, just to make the human evolution faster. And that guy who made a new ex new weapon of war. But he would be happy that his sister and his son both dealt with it together as a team. As he'd smile. As he would see the smile and look at him curiously. Father, what's that smile about? My son... I'm the most happiest man on the world right now. And so let's actually pull out a, well, box. Please, open this. It is a gift. A gift. Lucifer Sama, you sh Quiet, my son. I'm giving this to you because I feel responsible for your banishment, for your disappearance, and not being able to find you. This here will be your pieces. The king piece, put it on your chest. As Issei would open it, seeing a chest piece, chest pieces. What are these for? Put the king piece on your chest and say, say or chant your name. It is extinct linked to you personally as Issei would do so I Issei Haidu I Issei Haidu um, Lucifuge son of Sersex son of the Satan himself and his wife yada 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 he goes through the whole ritual thing as the, ch as the king piece actually mutates and actually goes into him. As Serzex and Grafia are shocked, along with Milicus and his, well, well, Rius, who saw the chest piece mutate. Uh, what was that about? I've never seen a king piece mutate before. That is incredible. You must have extreme, have extreme amount of power. As they'd all hear cracking sounds, as they'd all look to the chest pieces, seeing that all of them pretty much mutated, apart from one. The pawn piece. A singular pawn piece. What? They all mutated at bar one? Damn! Damn, nephew, you're damn strong! Uh... <laughs> um... Uh, is that good or bad? Oh, that is good. That means you only need to have one of those. 
for anybody. Well, not unless they prove way too strong. Then you're going to need more than one piece. But they're the only ones you can get, because these things are hard to make. <laughs> um, well, uh, ain't, uh, ain't this a uh, <laughs> strange little outcome? Strange? He say, you, my cute little nephew, are going places. You already got more than one pair of wings. What? You have two pairs. You have four pair of devil wings. Really? Yes. You are too strong already. <laughs> uh. Oh, this is awkward. <laughs> Rius, don't worry. I'll teach him the ropes, brother. You, my nephew are coming with me back to Kuo tomorrow. Um, okay. I need to go and talk to Grace, though. Grace? The woman you saw, uh, she's not actually there. She's a hologram. A hologram? She's a... There's suddenly something would appear. I am the hologram. An AI, to be precise. As all of them, bar Issei, would jump, Instead of activate their magic powers. Hmm. Interesting. You guys are really that scared of a hologram? Grace, uh, these are my family. You got Gravier, Lucifuge, my mother, Sersex Lucifer, my dad, Rius Brimory, my aunt, and Milicus, um, my baby brother. Uh, this is gonna get some this is gonna be some getting used to. Hmm. How you doing, Sprout? Hmm. Really? People are always calling me Sprout. Well, you are. <laughs> uh, well, I'm Grace. I'm the artificial intelligence that helps, well, Issei hide you out here. Did he make you himself? Yes, he did. And, uh, well, I was hearing pretty much all of what he said, especially about that, uh, well, spider lady. And you, young man, if I catch you even whispering about it near Issei, I am going to find a way to slap you. No boy should be hearing this. And everybody would look to Milica says he would just shrink. Why is everybody looking at me? Does everybody would just chuckle at Milicus' uh, sheepish look? Well, eventually, Grace would disappear. Well, uh... Should we get something to eat? Yes. The next day. Tuesday. As everybody would be shocked seeing Issei. Basically, Issei hide Haidu with his eyes opened. And it looks like he's not blind. And some of the girls actually have blushes on his on their faces due to his, well, clouded eyes. Although he seems to be perfectly fine in seeing stuff. And so he's also walking next to one of the, well, one of the Samas of Kuo. Rhea's Grimory, and they seem to be laughing. And... They seem to be somehow pretty close already. As some of the boys are jealous, the girls are annoyed, the perverted duo are just angry. Is they see to them a waste of space, no uh, well no good uh, no good nobody just crowding their Rius. Their uh, babe of sorts. Is, uh, well, they'll both actually run. Madahama and Mitsuda trying to punch Issei, only for his eyes to snap to them, grab their arms, twist, and kick them both in the ribs, <clears throat> causing them both to stumble back and actually cough out in pain. 
Miss Issei would just say, what the hell are you two doing? Miss Do would just say that he's corrupting their, well, Rius Tan, or Rius, their, well, queen, and therefore must be dealt with for the good of all men. Miss Issei would just shrug, just shake his head in absolute bewilderment. He knows of these two, their reputation. Hell, he's in the same class as them. But he's never would have thought that those two, these two would have ever have tried to attack him. Then he just drops the bomb, bombshell on their heads. She's my aunt. It's both boys would widen their eyes. As they would just say, preposterous. There's no way she's your aunt. She's too pretty to be your aunt. As both boys just go on a rant, as he says, I would begin to twitch. As he would just mutter under his breath, do not kill him, do not kill him, do not kill him. As Rias would look down to see, well, an ice, well, a small dagger starting to slowly appear. As he would just touch his shoulder, saying, come on, he say, we're going, both of us are going to be late for class if we don't get there soon. Right. As he say, would leave, just barging past them both. Rhea's just going around them. Pretty much all of them are actually shocked. Well, all the girls and boys are shocked, mainly due to Issei basically just barging past the two of them. And plus, they're still shocked to hear that Rhea's is actually his aunt. So, to them, this is just all gossip material. As he say, would sit down in his chair and just sigh, saying, When will those two ever learn? As Rias would just chuckle, saying that he should know that they're never going to learn. As he say, would just grumble about idiots being idiots. As he'd walk to his class, but not after giving his aunt a hug, saying, See you later, aunt. As she would just, whisp- just say, Just call me Rias. You've been calling me that for God knows how many long, how many years already. And she'll just chuckle, saying, "Fine, Rius." As Rius would actually hear "Isay" by two certain girls, as they both glomp him. As Rius would just chuckle, seeing them both give each other death glares. As Rius would just say to herself, "He's already got two girls after him." I think I'll have my familiar give them both uh, devil card, devil calling cards. So yeah, end of the day, Issei would be in the orc club room, in his sub zero, well outfit. As he would actually be kneeling on the floor, not kneeling, uh, basically meditating on the floor, on both knees. As his eyes would be closed. Is he would hear other people walk in. He would open his eyes to see Rius, Arkano, Kiba, Kaneko. Basically, that's it, really. As Issei wouldn't even stand. He would be basically in the corner facing Rius's, che- Rius's desk. Although it didn't take long for Kiba to notice him. Is he'd actually pull a sword out saying, and point at Issei, saying, Who are you? As Rias would pretty much quickly calm Kiba down by saying he is a, one of the kings of a peerage, or soon to start a peerage. He's also my nephew, Kiba, so back down. As Kiba would be shocked, as he would actually quickly apologise to Issei, saying that he's actually quite sorry he didn't realise... Only for him to hear himself getting blown off, saying that it's fine. He's actually quite new to this himself, so in his shoes, he would actually have reacted the same way. Which actually endears Kiba a bit. Because at least he now knows that somebody is also going to be looking after Rius. <clears throat> Sorry about that, I've got a croak in the front now. 
and Zarius and all that would talk. And basically, Rius would ask everybody about their contracts and see how they went last week. Cable would pretty much give Rius his report about his contracts, which makes Rius nod in respect. Should then check Koneko's. Not surprising, she had the same customer. And. Well, Akano, well, Akano was Akano. Rius, on the other hand, she didn't. She had a few that were a bit cringy, but she wasn't really going to tell her, well, servants that. And she'll introduce Issei Hyde, well, Issei, uh, well, Lucifuge, but call him by his full name, Issei Haidu Lucifuge, in respect of the people who adopted him and treated him with love all, of their, all their lives before they were killed. She would even say that he is her nephew, so give him respect, but not overly amount of, amount of respect. He's not actually in a full in a peerage yet. He's creating his own. As he say, would bow to them all, saying, please help me out in my endeavors. I will not be a burden to you all, I promise. Is well, Rius would teach him all about the purity system, how he gets well payment in antiques or straight up money, really. As he gets told all about the devil cards, is well, he actually found them to his liking. As Rius would actually have a call come out for her. It's actually one of the new customers. And by the feeling of who it was, she'd smile. And she'd say, well, I've got a call. And since it's a newbie, I'm taking the newbie with me. As you say, would suddenly vanish with Rius. Yes, they'd turn up in, well, one of the Kendo Club's girls' room. As he say, would be facing away from the bed, and she, as he does hear a gasp, and the word saying, Sub Zero? Yes, well, that would be the end of it. Sorry, guys, I actually gotta go, so, see ya.